Hello everyone, uh, thank you for coming along to this short press point after the hearing of Lord Hill. Um, you'll appreciate that we've had just three hours of a pretty intense grilling, so we won't uh, make it last forever, but we'll take two, three questions. Um, let's start with uh, Ian. Lord Hill, I, was, I kind of expected you, the question to be put in the past three hours, but I appreciate a kind of specific position on what your thoughts are on how the caps on bonuses, as far as we know, are being evaded uh, through your remuneration packages, allowance systems, etc., in the City of London particularly. Uh, can you kind of specify quite concretely what your position on this is? Thank you. Well, I think the... the uh position generally on it is straightforward, which is that the uh, legislation has been passed on the, uh, to deal with the flankers bonus question. Personally, my view is that you want to have pay systems that align uh, incentives with long-term uh, performance, uh, but the decision has been taken. Britain's bringing a case. That will be heard. Uh, my predecessor, uh, Monsieur Barnier, uh, wrote to the uh, EBA to ask them to look into this question of allowances. Uh, they're apparently doing that. They'll report back, and in the light of that, uh, people will decide uh, what steps to take. And that, as you know, is also now it's, uh, under the uh, responsibility of Vera Jourova, and I'm sure she will take it forward in the light of uh, whatever conclusions are reached. Uh, Bruno, then Chris, and I'll take one from someone non-British, ideally. Bruno. <laughs> Uh, Bruno Waterfield for Daily Telegraph. Lord Hill, I know that for, for all kinds of reasons you wanted to keep sort of politics um, out of your hearing, but you were asked a specific question by a British MEP about where you stood in terms of the renegotiation, the important renegotiation that will lead to an EU a referendum, possibly if the Conservatives are returned to government. And you said that wasn't a, a matter for you. Are you really saying that you will not participate in that British debate on Europe? Well, I think the, what the point I was trying to make was in terms of what the nature of the negotiation is, what uh, requests and uh, discussions the British government comes forward with, that is a matter for them. Uh, I hope and I'm sure that as part of that process, uh, as it unfolds uh, after the general election, and as you rightly say, assuming a conservative victory at that general election, um, then there will, I'm sure, be a task of, uh, if you like, interpretation and discussion uh, going both ways. And I would expect to uh, be able to contribute to that. But my day job, as it were, which was also the point I was trying to make, would be to act as a commissioner dealing with this important area of financial stability and regulation and capital markets union. And that is what I would be uh, concentrating on uh, in the European interest. Thank you. And final, and so uh, Chris Morris and then Lorenzo, and we stop. Yeah, Lord Hill, uh, Chris Morris from the BBC, just to follow up on Bruno's question, really. A lot of MEPs still seem to think that you've been sent here to be David Cameron's eyes and ears in Brussels. You obviously said repeatedly, I'm going to represent the general European interest. Do you think this is something which is going to rather haunt you for the next few years if you are indeed confirmed? Because I'm not sure, from talking to quite a few people, that you've yet convinced them that that's the case. Yeah, well, I'm a great believer that actions speak louder than words. And uh, I am absolutely certain that uh, if I'm confirmed in this job, uh, everyone will see that I will approach it in the way that they should expect all commissioners to approach it. So that is my intention. Uh, that is how I am thinking about it. It happens to be a legal obligation, uh, and it happens to be an obligation one would enter into under oath. So uh, I'm very clear uh, that is the task. Thank you. And a final question from Lorenzo. <coughs> uh, Lorenzo Gonsoli from TM News Italy. Um, I'm a little bit uh, out of this uh, bridge debate. Uh, I asked European questions. <laughs> uh, I think. Uh, for, forgive me if I give a, an opinion. I think you had a very good uh, uh, rhetoric. It, it was said actually, and uh, you gave some some concrete answers on some on some particular issues, in particular the, the capital market uh, uh, union. Uh, there are uh, though some things where you didn't give a clear answer. One was recurrent was the problem of uh, deposit guarantee. This was. At the beginning, this was part of the banking union, was one of the pillars, the third pillar. And then it seems to have been a little bit forgotten. Huh? 
So, uh, <coughs> of course, you cannot give us a uh, an answer that you didn't give to the MEPs, but can you be uh, more clear on this? It was not very clear. Well, okay. Do you think there will be this? Another thing, sorry, on the, on the banking separation, the, the, the Barnier uh, last reform that was uh, uh, presented too late, let's say, for this commission, uh, do you have the intention to go on, uh, perhaps following the British uh, uh, example on this, or not? And, uh, and, and then uh, the, uh, that's enough, sorry. Okay, that's enough. Um, in in uh, reverse order, uh, yes, the proposals that uh, Michel Barnier put forward on separation building on the Likkonen proposals, uh, I intend to take forward and see where those take us. On the deposit guarantee scheme, I'll try and give you the same answer that I was intending to give uh, to the whole committee, which is we currently have a uh, system that is going to be put in place that depends on uh, schemes operating in the uh, individual member states. I think we should go forward with that. But like everything, we need to keep it under review. And in due course, it is obviously open to us to uh, consider what is the best way forward. Thank you. And we'll close it there for today. Thank you very much. Thanks very much.